prevent resistance. Those are two words you hear a lot of as a farmer nowadays. And it's not just herbicides. Like we said earlier in the show, we really want you to take a look at preventing disease resistance as well, because the last thing we want to have happen is these great fungicides that are out there we lose them because they no longer kill target diseases. So we'll talk today about how you can prevent disease resistance on your farm. When you think about all the different modes of action or sites of action there are with herbicides, you say, wow, there really aren't that many choices. Well, when you look at the fungicides that we're using on the market today, there's really only a few modes of action that we're even using. So there's a lot less choices than there are herbicide choices. Now there's a lot of different product names that are out there but most of them are coming out of the strobiliorin family or out of the triazole family. Those two families make up a majority of the products that are out there. Even the combination products are typically combinations of those two modes of action. We're starting to see some of the SDHI class come in, uh, and that's been exciting because we've seen good control, good residual, those types of things. But the question is, as you're trying to fight disease, should you be using multiple effective modes of action just like we do with herbicides or should you rotate each pass with a different mode of action? So research that's come out fairly recently is showing basically if I can have two and preferably even three modes of action in that tank going after that disease on your crop that's going to be better than rotating different modes of action. So I think part of the reason why here is because if you look at disease, how often can we have new cycles, new generations of disease? Pretty quickly, okay? It's whole different than weeds. When we think about a lot of the weeds, where we farm in the northern part of the United States, you're gonna have one life cycle per year, maybe two at the most, okay? With the insects that are out there, we might have several different generations, but there are many bugs where it's one generation per year, maybe two. Okay, then you run into these diseases, and we might have uh, many new diseases uh, cycling through that plant, and we might have several replications of that disease throughout the different growing seasons. So I'm just trying to say we can build resistance a lot faster, it feels like to me, with these diseases, and that's in the northern part of the United States. Just imagine if you're in the southern part of the United States, and there are many different host crops for some of these diseases, they could have several generations per year. So if you only were trying to control them with one effective mode of action, well, by the time you use the next effective mode of action, um, that first disease is done, it's already built up resistance, and now we've started to have some issues. The other thing that's really different about the fungicides versus the herbicides is when you think about residual control, if you put a herbicide out that has good residual in the soil, well that's where new weeds are going to come from. They're going to have seeds in the ground that are going to germinate and start growing. Well if you've got good residual control you can hold a lot of them back. When you're talking about, well, how much residual am I going to get out of a fungicide application? Let's say you're uh, at the halfway point in the growth cycle of that crop. Well, all of a sudden it puts on more new foliage. Well, all that foliage is really unprotected. The fungicide is only going to protect the foliage that it comes in contact with and really, for the most part, only for a couple of weeks. And then you're going to need to reapply a fungicide to get more residual control out there if you have another wave of disease come through your field. You know what the easiest way to prevent disease resistance of fungicides is? It's to not even have to spray fungicides in the first place. So how can you have a more disease tolerant crop? Let's talk about that really quick. The first thing is I wanna have great drainage. If you have poor drainage, you've got a problem. You're much more likely to have disease issues. The next thing is we wanna properly feed our crop all season long. We don't wanna be short on micronutrients. I mean, I want you to ask yourself for a second. You may have been applying plenty of N, P, and K for many years, but how much molybdenum have you put out there? How about manganese, zinc, boron, iron, copper, sulfur, all those nutrients are super important in the plant. And if you have a good balanced diet for your plant, it's gonna be much healthier. It's the exact same thing as with human health. If we take our vitamins every day, we eat right, then what do they say? Hey, we're much more likely to be healthy. We are much less likely to have disease issues. It's the exact same thing with your plant. So when you start having a lot of disease issues, I want you to ask yourself, um, okay, I know I've got this disease, but how did it really get started? What am I short on in my plant? Why is my plant not healthy enough to tolerate that disease? If we can fix that, then hopefully we don't even have to spray fungicides later on in the year. 
So the real key to stopping diseases becoming resistant to our fungicides is use multiple modes of action each time you're spraying and keep that plant healthy throughout the season. One other thing that can help your crop is controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.